Greetings all, this is Nick of the Extra Hairy Variety back again to talk about Star Wars Legion. I know, two Legion videos in as many days. The world has truly gone topsy-turvy. We got another preview article, this time about the Rebel Pathfinder, which I didn't actually previously speak about in its original reveal, so we get to go through all of that today. Uh, plus, just today as well, at the local um, Australian supply level, we had confirmation that this and Genoso will be coming out this Thursday, which is the 21st of February. I'm guessing it's probably around about the same time elsewhere in the world. I know some countries get things a bit later. But just in case you're unaware and you're interested in either of these, probably get in contact with your local gaming store because there's a good chance it will come out in a couple of days. But enough about that. Let's talk about this reveal because now we have all the information for this expansion pack. Uh, always good to see that with Legion articles. Um, I often feel like a lot of these don't give enough information out. So yeah, great to see that. We have all the cards here on the spread, all the stats. So let's go through everything. First of all, here is the unit card. The unit itself costs 68 points. So we're talking a 28 point increase over the regular Rebel Trooper, which I'll put alongside here for the sake of comparison. Do bear in mind though that the Trooper is a core unit, so it does fulfill that requirement in your list building um, that Rebel Pathfinders don't. So you gotta be careful with that. You can't just chuck a heap of these instead of Rebel Troopers. For the extra point investment, you gain a decorated comms sidearm, as well as the regular Heavy Trooper tech and grenade, which you have otherwise. They have Danger Sense 3. You may choose not to remove your suppression tokens. While defending against a ranged attack, roll one extra defense die for each suppression token you have, adding up to three extra dice. Which seems like an interesting piece of tech against highly suppressive lists, um, maybe against ATSTs, perhaps against Bosk, which we just saw revealed in our video yesterday. Um, could be a useful bit of tech against it. These guys do have a constitution of two rather than one, so they're not just going to start fleeing willy-nilly. Uh, also, Dauntless, after you rally, if you are suppressed but not panicked, you may gain one suppression token to perform a free move action. Uh, having more power over your suppression tokens for the sake of danger sense seems like a very powerful thing. Also, Infiltrate, you may deploy anywhere beyond range three of all enemies. Um, very reminiscent of Ninjas from Infinity, if you guys ever played that kind of stuff. But it's interesting because we already have sort of like a drop troop mechanic in the Battlefield Conditions cards, which I'll put up on the screen here for you guys to see. So having this on a specific trooper, uh, being able to deploy anywhere on the battlefield, well, nearly anywhere on the battlefield, right from the start of the game, seems very powerful. Um, I like that the player controlling these has the agency to choose whether or not to do that and where to put them and all that kind of stuff. I guess the real question here is how much battlefield control do these guys have because that really does relate to that. Being able to drop these guys either directly onto a mission objective, hold it or steal it or whatever you have to do, or just putting them in a great spot to snipe seems like a pretty potent thing to do. Indeed, that is something that we can do because we do actually have some range 4 tech. Despite the fact that their regular ranged attack is range 1 to 3 with two white dice, some of their upgrade cards do help with that. Apart from that, all the rest of the stats, they defend with white dice. Uh, one health per mini 2 constitution. Regular surges on offense and defense, movement speed 2 as you'd expect, all pretty straightforward stuff. But let's move on to this upgrade spread. We have a copy of Fragmentation Grenade and Duck and Cover. Also, uh, this face down card here, we do have confirmation on what this is because this was already leaked. That is a copy of comms relay. So you get a bit more flexibility in the way you give out commands. Indeed, this is the second rebel pack um, that includes this. I'm assuming the Empire are gonna do the same thing with the Death Troopers, so they have two different expansions with that. Getting a nice amount of copies of these out in the wild, always very, very important. I'm actually curious about this card. Um, I've never spoken about it before here on the channel, and I look at it and I compare it to long range comlink. And the comparison between these I find is quite interesting because I think long range comm link is probably better on your more high tier units, but the comm relay probably offers you a bit more versatility because it is not locked to any one unit. It is worth pointing out that this is five points less than the long range comm link, so perhaps that's going to push it a bit more in terms of meta play. I like having the different options. I think it's fun to be able to capitalize on your different play style. 
But enough about that, let's talk about the rest of these cards here that were revealed in this article. First up, we have Overwatch, which allows you to perform standby actions at range 1 to 3. Um, which is slightly amusing because I have a really bad habit of when I'm playing Legion of calling standby Overwatch, so this is just going to confuse me even more. Um, but yes, this is very, very handy. It makes a lot of sense with these guys, especially considering they can deploy basically anywhere on the board. It feels like standby is going to be a very important action for them because they're going to be all about uh, controlling different parts, trying to hold different sections. So that feels like a powerful thing to be able to do. We also have revealed here Bistan. Yes, Warwick Davis has entered the world of Star Wars Legion for 32 points. However, we do get something quite powerful. Bistan adds a mini into your squad that gives you an extra attack of range 1 to 4 with a black dice and 4 white dice. Uh, impact 1 and Ion 1. Now adding impact to the pool is pretty potent. Considering there is actually another weapon in this pack that does attack um, at range 1 to 4. The good thing about this is um, I compare it to other things that need to be spent uh, that little tap down symbol on the side of the card in order to be used like the rocket launcher the stormtroopers have and one of the big issues with that card it actually slows your movement speed when you use it. This doesn't do that but you do have to re-ready it and use an action in order to do that which doesn't feel great However, I do have to admit there's a nice bit of upside here. If you're attacking at range 4, you can use the extra weapon um, on all of your other minis to add the impact to that pull. You can sink a very long range attack against a vehicle, you um, get a guaranteed impact result against armor, um, ionization as well. I like that impact and ion is on the same card, usually it's sort of one or the other. Um, so this guy seems very, very decent. I think it's just mainly a question of whether we can actually have a mini that taps down, whether that cuts down the efficiency too much. It is a 32 point upgrade, but I am curious to see what this kind of thing can do. Looks like a really, really cool effect to have in the game. Also another unique character in PAL. Actually, I gotta say as an Imperial player, I'm kind of jealous of this stuff because I really like um, unique, interesting characters and their effects in different squads. Um, he adds a attack of range 1 to 4 with a red and a white. Now off the bat it looks like, hey that combos well with Bistan. Unfortunately it doesn't because the squad can only take one extra specialist mini. So can't have this guy and Bistan. You gain Inspire 1, which means after your rally step, remove up to one suppression token from another friendly unit at range 1 to 2. Pretty cool. And leader. Uh, Pow is your unit leader. So it's interesting um, whether we want to take this guy or Bistan. This guy's 10 points cheaper, which is nice. Adds another range 4 attack, which I quite like. And I think it really comes down to the play style. Um, having Inspire is really, really good. Maybe if you have multiple Pathfinders, that feels like something that could be potent because then you can deploy several of them uh, close to mission objectives or your opponent's deploy zones or whatever and you're more likely to have other units around this one. Using two or three of these alongside each other could lead to some very interesting deployments um, and I think that's the key thing going on here. In fact, perhaps if you're using power and you're not using a bunch of other pathfinders, you might just in fact not deploy them away from the rest of your squad and you may just use them as a regular trooper squad that has a bit more punch, a bit more flavor that can help inspire the rest of your squad. Seems pretty decent. I like the two different design directions you have from these two unique characters. I will say it is a little bit awkward. Um, in order to feel both of them, you have to buy two of these packs and you have to essentially own two copies each of these unique minis. I mean, they're nice minis, so I'm not complaining too much, but it feels a bit annoying that you have to do that. Um, it's a shame there's no like separate leader card just for POW, so you can uh, feel POW and Bistan without having to buy two packs. Anyway, moving right along because we have this unique weapon, and this is the sidearm upgrade for this. The A300 blaster, which in its short range configuration, uh, allows you to fire one red dice at range one to two, which is more consistent, but it is less dice um, than the regular attack. So it's something worth considering. It's going to be used on a case by case thing. It's not going to be, oh, if you have the short range configuration version of this card active, you're not always going to use it. 
But what's cool about this is you also have the long range configuration which fires a white dice at range one to four. That works really well with Pow and Bistan. It means you have a lot more map control. These guys do have offensive surges, so that white dice isn't useless. It's a shame that Overwatch doesn't work up to range four, but I guess it's trying to temper the power level of these things just in case they go a bit crazy. Uh, but this is really, really interesting, especially considering it only costs six points and making sure that your whole squad can fire up to range four. Indeed, I can see a world where the Pathfinders just equip this with the long range uh, configuration face up and keep it there the whole game. They can already fire at range one to three with a couple of dice anyway, so I don't see a whole heap of consistent application for the short range version of this, but happy to be proven wrong there. But all in all, having more options is always a good thing. And I gotta say, I love the versatility of this unit. I think that's the key thing here. This might be taken in lieu of one of your Rebel Core units. Just again, a reminder guys, you must have three core units and this unit does not go towards that total. So be very careful when building the squad. This isn't just a straight trade. You do have to think about squad building. And now that we have things like Jin, Sabine, Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, um, there are a lot of different flavors and options for the Rebellion and a nice bit of versatility. Be curious to see if the Death Troopers on the Empire get this kind of design love, get this kind of versatility would be really, really cool to see. Stay tuned for that. I'll make a video on those when we get more information coming out. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also head over to the main channel, like and subscribe there. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting my Patreon. Every dollar counts. It's a hugely beneficial thing. And it basically is the key thing that is keeping my content on YouTube going. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in the next video.